discounts on purchases and invoices. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page and the website. The book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, I'm teaching free online each week. And the blog, Accounting Accidentally. Recent videos have talked about creating uh, a purchase order and receiving inventory. I want to go down that same route, but this time I want to talk about um, getting terms, discounted terms on an invoice that we get for buying something. So the first thing I'm going to do is I created a purchase order. If I click on purchase orders and I click previous, you've seen this example in prior videos. This is Mount Top Denim, a vendor. We're buying 300 pairs of outdoor jeans. Outdoor jeans is a product that we sell we mark up and we sell to clients on a retail basis, so we're not manufacturing, we're just buying into inventory. It's $12,000, and I'm going to save and close that purchase order. And now I'm going to go to receive inventory with a bill. I'm going to click on a vendor mountaintop denim, and the prompt that pops up says there are open purchase, <coughs> excuse me, open purchase orders exist for this vendor, do you want to receive against one or more of these orders? And by that they mean purchase orders. In other words, does your bill apply to one of the existing purchase orders that you have? I'm going to click yes. Select a purchase order to receive. I'm going to check this purchase order and I'm going to hit OK. Now so far it looks like what we saw in prior videos. Outdoor jeans is the item, the product, 300 pairs. My cost is 30 blue jeans, my company is $40. But I'm going to do something new, and that is I'm going to click on the Terms button here. And I'm going to say that the terms on this invoice are 210 net 30. That means we get a 2% discount if we pay within 10 days, and the bill is due in 30 days. So the discount date, the date that I have to pay by to get the 2% discount is 3713. Today is 22513. 10 days out is 3713. So I have to pay by 3713 to get the discount. Everything else is data that we've seen before. I'm going to cl click save and close. It says you have changed the terms for Mountain Top, top Denim. Would you like to have that information appear next time? I'm going to hit yes because I'm going to assume the Mountain Top Denim excuse me, pays me uh, or gives me a discount 2% within 10 days from each time from now going forward. So it's a new payment term. I'm going to hit yes so it does appear on the bill when I attach it to a purchase order going forward. So I'm going to hit yes. So it's going to load that data in there and it closes it out. The next thing I did was created an invoice to sell the 300 pairs of jeans that I bought for Mountaintop Denim to my client Elm Street Clothing. So I opened an invoice and created one for Elm Street Clothing. 300 pairs outdoor jeans. My retail price is 60. Today's the 25th, the date of the invoice. I'm also shipping them today, but I'm going to put some terms on there for this invoice. I'm going to offer Elm Street Clothing a 2% discount if they pay within 10 days net 30 and I'm going to hit save and close on that transaction. You've changed the transaction. Do you want to record your changes? Yes. I want to give them a discount. Do I want the terms to appear when I send invoices to Elm Street? I'm going to hit yes. And so now I've created an invoice with terms on it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to receive the payment from Elm Street Clothing for that invoice that I created. It's, 
It's kind of neat that um, QuickBooks has the arrows here to help you understand it. So I'm going to go from Create Invoice to Receive Payment. Receive From, I'm going to click on Elm Street. You see that it gives me choices for invoices that I can pull up. I'm going to check on this box number four. Now you'll notice something when I click on the invoice. I get an error command that says you cannot apply an amount greater than the total payment plus any existing credits. Because what I want to do is, what the system is prompting me to do is, let us know if you want to recognize the discount that they were able to pay or not. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to click on the amount. It brings me back to the invoice. And I'm going to hit Apply Credits. So when I hit Apply Credits, I get a command that says QuickBooks is detected. There are no credits or payments to apply to this invoice. And there are no previously applied payments, which is saying that we don't see any credits or payments that would reduce the amount of money that this person owes. So, so far we haven't accounted for the terms that are on the invoice yet. So why don't we try clicking Apply Discounts and Credits. So this takes me to Discounts and Credits and it says Suggested Discount is the 2% of the $18,000 because they're paying before the discount date of 3-7, they're paying on 225. So they're within the 10 days. And 2% of the 18,000 is $360. Now, I haven't designated an account yet for the discount. So the example account I'm going to pick is called Sales Discounts, which is a, an income account, but it actually reduces income. So when we look at the income statement, you're going to see sales discounts reducing total sales. And you see the description is discounts given to customers. I got that account by collecting, by uh, selecting from examples. I clicked on that um, tab. So I'm going to hit save and close. So it says it's sending the discount amount to sales discounts. I'm going to hit done. And we see what happened was is that the original amount and the amount due are still eighteen thousand dollars, but the discount is three hundred and sixty thousand. I wonder what would happen if I click on this one now. Well, I'm still getting that error message that says you cannot apply an amount greater than the total payment plus the existing credits. So I'm going to hit OK because another thing I can do is enter the amount that they paid up here at the top where it says amount. I can actually enter a physical amount, an actual number. Well look what happens when I enter an amount 17640 which was the $18,000 invoice less the discount. When I enter that payment 17640 it feeds into the payment category. It also puts down an amount applied and an amount for discount and credit applied also fills. Now payment method I'm, I can put by check however I like. I'm just going to put check. I'm going to deposit it to checking because again I'm trying to avoid using that account called undeposited funds. I'm going to hit save and close and see what happens. And to finish up let's go to reports, company financial balance sheet. I'm going to click on the checking here, which is the asset account. And I see that I have a debit in cash to increase it for $17,640. let us go to reports, company financial income statement, profit and loss standard I should say. And I see under sales income, outdoor jeans, if I click on the detail, there's the $18,000 sale, that's sales income for the outdoor jeans. So I see that I got the uh, sale 
loaded. And you'll also see that sales discount is a negative number that reduces total income by $360. If I click on that, there is the discount, sales discount for Elm Street Clothing for $360. It's a negative. So it looks like we got everything posted correctly for receiving the payment. So what we've seen is a purchase order, receiving a bill for which we could pay a discount, and then creating an invoice that allowed a client to pay us a discount and receiving an amount less the discount. That's as far as we'll get on discount purchases on purchases and invoices. For one-on-one -on -one tutoring you can go to the website stltest.net. We also have additional videos and Excel spreadsheets. I teach the Cost Accounting for Dummies class free online each week, 11 o'clock Central on Saturdays, and the blog is Accounting Accidentally. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.